All right, so let's solve this problem. We have water. It's initially saturated vapor, very important, at a given pressure of 4 bar. It fills a closed rigid, that's a key word, container. So the volume of that container is not going to change. And it's closed, meaning there's no inflow or outflow of that container. It's the amount of water is trapped and stays constant in that constant volume container. The water is heated until its temperature reaches 400 degrees C. Kinetic and potential energy effects can be ignored. For the water, as the system, determine the initial temperature in degrees C and the heat transfer in kilojoules per kilogram of the water. And here, here are the answers. Well, let's go ahead and think about this problem. So we have a container. It's rigid. Maybe I, I show it at state 1, and then maybe I show it at state 2. It doesn't change shape, and the mass is constant. So it's like the mass initial is equal to the mass of the water at the final state. Um, we're given information about the pressure initial is uh, 4 bar. Uh, we're not given any information about the pressure final. Uh, we're not given any information about the temperature initial, but we're given information about the temperature final being 400 degrees C. And the volume, let me say volume 1 is equal to the volume 2, it's a rigid tank. So we can conclude from this information that the specific volume at state 1 is unknown, but it's equal to the specific volume at state 2 because it's a rigid tank, closed, etc. All right. You could continue this list of properties, volume, mass, those are properties, pressure, temperature, specific volume, and I suspect we're probably going to need the U, the internal energy at state 1, and the U, internal energy at state 2. Okay, let me back this up and clean it up just a little bit. Even though V1 we know is equal to V2, we would like to figure out whether we can calculate V1 or V2 first. Maybe, maybe it's easier to calculate V2, maybe it's easier to calculate V1. Anyway, any additional information that we might add to this? Well, let's go ahead and say that it's saturated vapor here. Okay, so it's saturated vapor, constant volume. Um, you can now think of how I'm going to be able to calculate some properties if it's saturated vapor and they want us to calculate that initial temperature T1 well isn't that the saturation temperature at the pressure of 4 bar and that's what it is if you wanted to calculate V1 because it's saturated vapor it's just V sub G at 4 bar and U1 would be U sub G at 4 bar so we can use this information. It's like this piece of information that it's saturated vapor and that the pressure allows us to calculate things like temperature, specific volume, internal energy. Okay. We can go to the table A3 because that has pressure as a primary input in the table for water. And we look down for 4 bar, and we find right there is our temperature. So the initial temperature, T1, is 143.6 degrees C. That would be the answer for maybe part A if they labeled it part A. Let me go back and take a look. 143.6 looks good. So let's go down here, and uh, I can... I just want to put numeric values on this sheet as well. 143.6 degrees C. And then V sub 1, go back to our table. It's saturated vapor. So it's V sub G. That would be 0.4625. That would be 0.4625 meter cubed per kilogram. I'm writing it in a kind of unorthodox way, but hopefully you'll follow. And then use of one, the internal energy of saturated vapor comes in at 
2553.6 kilojoules per kilogram. All right, so I'm just flushing it out and showing that we can get those three values. But now we want to calculate the heat transfer during the process in units of kilojoules per kilogram of the water. So during this process from state one to state two, we're adding heat Q, you can think of cap Q one to two. Well, write the first law of thermodynamics for the process that goes from state one to state two. And so we'll have uh, final internal energy minus the initial internal energy is equal to how much heat was transferred minus the work one to two because it's a rigid container, there's no boundary work, and there's no shaft in or out, so that is zero. And then we can divide the whole equation by mass, and so you get the Q, one to two divided by the mass, is equal to the lowercase U2, which is the specific internal energy at the final state, minus U1. There you go. So this is what we're asked to solve for, Q, 1 to 2 divided by the mass. That's how many kilojoules of heat transfer per kilogram of the water. That's good. And we look and we say, we already calculated U1. Great. And I need to calculate U2. Not so great. What was the idea that allowed us to calculate T1, V1, U1? It, it was the state principle meaning that two independent intensive properties fix the state and allow us to calculate other intensive properties at that same state. So we look over at state two and we say we have one property right here, temperature, 400 degrees C. Is there another property? Well, and I need them to be intensive. It, it, so it, it, you conclude with a little bit of work because it's rigid that we can calculate V2. So V2 is 0.4625 meter cube per kilogram because it's a closed rigid container. So those two fix the state, just like the pressure and the knowledge that it was saturated vapor fixed state one, the temperature and the specific volume at state two fixed state two. So in principle, we're going to be looking for U2, which is the internal energy as a function of temperature and specific volume. It's not that common that we look up internal energy as a function of temperature and specific volume. It's more common to look up, you know, internal energy as a function of uh, pressure and temperature or some other, maybe internal energy is a function of pressure and quality if it's in a two-phase region or, or temperature and quality or something else. But we can still do it, it it's a little, more work to help us understand where this state is because we know this is saturated vapor at state one we would like to know it, what state two is we draw a diagram and we'll have a pressure volume diagram you could put a temperature volume diagram as well put the dome on and then say at our initial pressure of four bar we are at saturated vapor and we're going to undergo a process that is constant volume constant specific volume so the process is going to start at state one and either go down along a line of constant specific volume or up along a line of constant specific volume and you have to ask yourself do i think that the pressure at state two is going to be higher or is the pressure at state two going to be lower than the four bar and it doesn't take long. You can think about it from the perspective of temperature as well, but it's going to go up. All right, so this is our final state two. And now you say, well, where is this? It's out in the superheated region. So I don't look, if it was two phase, I would be looking at tables A2 and A3. If it was compressed liquid, I'd be looking at table A5. But it's superheated, I'm going to be looking to use data that's in table A4 to be able to make this evaluation of U2 as a function of temperature and specific volume. All right, so I remember this is my temperature 400 and this is my specific volume 0.4625. I suspect the pressure is going to be greater than 4 bar 
So let's go ahead and jump over to table A4 and we just start the hunt. And we look at different pressure blocks. This one's at five bar. Good. I mean, it, it's above four bar and that's what we suspect. And this is a pressure block of seven bar. And we know our final temperature is 400. So it's like I truncated the table so it wouldn't be too confusing, but you look along this line at 400 degrees C. This is also 400 degrees C over here on this side. That side, that's the whole thing goes across. And we have a specific volume. Okay, so this on the in our specific volume that we're given is the 0.4625. And we ask, does it fall between the specific volume here at 400 degrees C and uh, 5 bar? And the specific volume between 400 degrees C and 7 bar? So I should put degree C on there. It, it does. And so that's why I grabbed these two tables. But it's a little bit of a hunt when you're doing it by yourself. You're looking to try and find the two pressure blocks that allow you to, to have a specific volume at 400 degrees C, one below and one above, and they're the two pressure blocks on either side. There's no other pressure block. There's not like a pressure block at 5.5 uh, bar, and then the pressure block at 6.5 bar. But there would be, you would need to make that comparison and find which two it's between. Well, now you have interpolation. There's a couple different ways to view this interpolation, but you want to maybe think about um, extracting the data. I would maybe put pressure here. And, uh, and you think, okay, this pressure is uh, 5 bar. And let's just put everything in bar up here. And then this pressure is uh, 7 bar. All right. And then, I'm sorry, I don't need to repeat it here. And then what we have a specific volume. And this whole table that I'm reconstructing is at 400 degrees C. It's uh, 400 degrees C. And so if it's 400 degrees C and 5 bar, then the specific volume, just looking at it, is uh, 0.6173. And if it's at 7 bar, it's 0.4399. There's too many nines in there, sorry, right there. And you say, aha, the value that I'm coming in with is 0 0.4625. Now, a student may be a little you know, challenged because it's going down in specific volume, but that's okay. It, in, interpolation works. Um, it, it's like if I had an... Uh, an X Y plot and I had a pair X1 and a pair Y1 and then I had another point X2 and Y2 you know it's you know and you're coming in with the X between X1 and X2 it, it, it makes sense it's it's X2 is greater than but it can also be on a Y X plot and it's like this and you still do some interpolation it, it works the math works so okay let me clean this up a little bit I'm gonna get rid of this get rid of this okay so this whole table again is for 400 degrees C and then we're gonna have another column internal energy so the internal energy <clears throat> at 400 degrees C 5 bar is 2963 oh come on let's write that better 2963.2 put the units up here kilojoules per kilogram just like I should have put the units meter cubed per kilogram right there and then <clears throat> over here it's a 2960.9 okay so I need to do the interpolation to find this value u2 and if I was interested I could also get p2 p2 is between 5 and 7 bar U2 is between that value, 2963.2 and 2960.9. Well, uh, I bust this into two steps. I get the fraction, kind of, it's like 
getting the fraction in the x-axis, if you can think about it that way, which variable am I interpolating with respect to? The v. So it would be the v that I want minus the lower value, let's say at 5 bar, divided by the specific volume at 7 bar minus specific volume at 5 bar. Okay, I'm running out of room. You put the, the, the numbers in. Okay, I'll put them in. 0.4625 minus 0.6173 divided by 0.4397 minus 0.6173. I know it's a minus over minus, but it'll be a positive fraction. And that fraction comes in at, and I didn't calculate it. Can you believe that? Great. I didn't calculate it as intermediate. I just left it in my calculator. And then I used that fraction, I need to scoot down, to come over and get u is equal to u at 5 plus that fraction times u at 7 bar minus the u at 5 bar. And so just substituting numbers, you get 2963.2 plus whatever that fraction is, which I didn't record, sorry. 2960.9 minus 2963.2. And yes, that's a ch change. That's a negative. This is negative right here, but it'll work. Just let the trust the math. And then you get the internal energy at state two. At state two, that's what I'm calculating. Comes in at 2961.195. Too many digits, but kilojoules per kilogram. And if you wanted to, you could come over here and you could find that pressure. That pressure turns out to be a 6.743 bar. Something like, something like that. Okay. That was a lot of work. Basically, you were trying to find U in the... It's a superheated region using the data for water in table A4, um, not 5, A4. And knowing temperature and specific volume. Okay, so let's go back to our problem. We have now this number for U2. We can put in our two values, 2961.5. Uh, 195 minus our 2553.6 and you calculate and I didn't really leave a good room for it um, let's just put lowercase q 1 to 2 comes in at 407.6 kilojoules per kilogram and box it and there you go 407.6 well, I hope that was helpful. Thank you for your attention.